Welcome to the Heroes of the Storm live match. Shoutcasted by Dustin Browder and Kevin Naki. Your players are members of the Heroes of the Storm development team. Hello, BlizzCon! Woo! All right. I got a message for everyone who can hear my voice who's not already in this audience. If you can hear me right now, you need to be in Hall A. You are not in the right place. These people know. Come on, let them hear you. Tell them where you're at. All right, we have got right here the very first Absolutely, hopefully amazing <laughs> shout cast of an alpha, an alpha version, <laughs> very, very alpha of Heroes of the Storm. Yeah, that's absolutely right, and I hope you guys are excited as I am. Uh, how's your BlizzCon been so far? That's what I like to hear. So we're going to start off with a match today on Blackheart's Bay. You want to go ahead and take an introduction to this game real quick, set yeah, up the stage for us? So I want to point out a few things about this match. There is absolutely no money on the line at all. There's no money. Nobody gets paid more or less based on how this game goes. But these guys will probably never get the chance to do this again. After this, we'll probably have pros doing this and all kinds of important people and all of these game developers. These are the designers on the game right here. This is their one chance, their one chance at glory. Their one chance to show they've got the goods. And we all, we all sit together in Blizzard. We all sit together. So if these guys fail, if these guys fail, they are going to hear about it forever, for the rest of their natural lives. So don't be fooled by no money being on the line. I think the stakes here are far higher than anywhere else in the world today. Dustin, I have a question for you. We have a red team. We have a blue team. I'd like to look at the color of your shirt. Are you biased much? Well, let's be clear. I've watched these guys play a lot, all right? Blue team, I think, has a little bit of a skill advantage. So that means these are the good guys. This is not a real shoutcast. I can be biased. These are the good guys. Those, those are the bad guys, all right? I am not going to take that. I stand for blue team. All right, so we're going to play here our first match on Black Hearts Bay. And on Black Hearts Bay, players are gonna try to gather coins from various places on the map, and they're gonna try to take those coins to Black Heart to turn them in. And when they do so, we're gonna see Black Heart turn his ghostly pirate ship on the enemy and blast their towns to pieces. So watch for those coin captures. Now when you're carrying coins, when you're carrying coins, you can be killed and the coins will go scatter. So then other players will come in and hoover them up and try to collect the coins. So watch for those attempts to collect those coins. Watch for what happens. It's absolutely vital that you deal with the coins and you fight, control, protect Blackheart so you can drop off those coins. That's right. And there are going to be other places where coins are dropped as well. Don't forget, of course, that we will have treasure chests that spawn all yep. over the place. There's even minion camps that are going to drop some coins for you. So there's a lot of opportunities to fight around a lot of objectives. And that's going to be kind of the central point of a lot of these engagements. All right, I think we're ready to go. Red team, are you ready? Blue team, are you ready? All right. BlizzCon, are you ready? That's all I get paid for is to say good. that. No, yeah, that was yeah. awesome. I can see the back of my head. That's pretty cool. Huh? I'm really overdressed really right now because I just came often. off of Hearthstone. That's so. awesome. All right. So when these players load in, they're going to line up for us right near their uh, palaces so we can talk about the heroes these guys are playing. We can sort of describe the sort of the compositions these various teams have taken. And we do want to reiterate once again that this game is in alpha right now. So uh, yes, uh, as Dustin kind of smirched to the side there, um, this is a hopefully an awesome representation of the game, though I've obviously been playing it for a while. It's been absolutely fantastic. Awesome. So I'm really excited awesome. to see this debut. <laughs> Our players are here joking. They should take a shot every time they die. All right. <laughs> All right, blue team is charging forward. We've got Raynor. We've got Tassadar. We've got Tyriel. Tyriel fighting next to his old buddy Diablo. And we have got uh, Falstad, the Griffin Rider. So this has got, uh, they got a support here in Tassadar. They've got a couple of uh, 
They got an assassin and two warriors, both in Tyrael and in Diablo. That's absolutely mighty. Falstead, of course, uh, bringing up the rear. And we've got Nova doing her little dance right there. Kerrigan, Abathur for the <laughs> red team. Absolutely amazing. Stitches showing his moves. And we've got Gazlo, the goblin tinker, right there on the end. Yeah, very cool unit compositions here. Uh, if you guys were able to see the panels, you know that guy right in the middle, Abathur, he's not going to get out on the map. He's not going to get out there and start slugging it out with a lot of the enemies out there. He's going to hide in the bushes. He's going to call down spells. He's going to try and get inside of his, uh, his teammates' minions and try and provide support however he can. All right, they're scattered out across the map right now. Abathur going for a deep tunnel to get the early watchtower, grabbing the watchtower before anybody can possibly get to it and running like a little girl as fast as he can back behind his towns. He does not want to be out there. He'll be absolutely annihilated. Tassar looking to pick up the watchtower. We got a battle for me around the watchtower up here. Tyrael and Rainer are closing in, and there's some moves. Rainer in a little bit of trouble oh! there. Oh, he's in a lot of trouble. Kerrigan, Kerrigan and Abathur together. Kill Rainer. Killed her boyfriend. That's terrible, Kerrigan. How could you? You can cut the sexual tension with a knife right now. Um, so Tyrael and Falstead are trying to do whatever they can. Ooh, oh, great pull from big hook, big hook. Tyrael trying to make his way away. Falstead comes back out. He can dish out some pretty good damage with his abilities. And once he works his way up to that ultimate, he'll have really long range and a very direct beam. Uh, we have some fights going down here at the bot lane, though, as everyone's trying to move in and take out those treasure chests, which just spawned. While the treasure chest has spawned, there's a big battle developing around it. We got Abathur and Kerrigan together, along with Stitches and Nova. Looks like Blue's in a little bit of trouble here. Big battles developing around. A false dad leaps in and almost gets hammered for it. This is a critical battle. Who controls this treasure chest? Stitches gets a kill. Red team picks up almost all of the coins. And make, I think got all of the coins entirely. Blue team in a little bit of trouble here as they sort of dance away. It was a really smart move too because Abathur jumped there in on Kerrigan to be able to protect her while she takes damage. And that allowed Stitches to move down and grab those coins. Really smart objective control there from Red. Looks like Blue has picked up some coins there. Diablo's got some and they're dropping off here as well. So you can see the coin totals up to the middle of the map. Right at the top of the screen there's that little skull toy. And there's one to zero right now in favor of Blue. Big team fight here. Three on two developing around. Blackheart as they're trying to grab these coins. Watch when there's Abathur as well. So really, Here, it's four on three. Tyrael goes down. If Tyrael gets to near somebody after he dies, he explodes. There's the explosion. Red team scattering away from Tyrael. Little interruptions there by Falstead. He's playing a little game with these guys, yeah. trying to prevent them from dropping off those doubloons. As you just saw there from Tyrael, though, he has an ability that when he dies, he turns into a spirit form of himself that's actually able to move very slowly, admittedly, towards his enemies. And when that uh, time expires, it explodes and does uh, pretty good AoE damage. So we got five coins now, red for red team blue, only with a single false stat and a little bit of trouble. Oh, wow! Oh. The hook! Can he get away? I don't know! Oh, and Abathur with the kill! That was Abathur Spike popping off of Garrigan there that dropped him. And red team continuing to push hard on this position. They've got the coins, they've got a bit of an advantage here in the midfield. They're doing very, very well at this point, driving back blue. Woo, all right, Ooh. so this is uh, this has been fairly one-sided so far, I'll admit. Um, but let's see how this continues to develop. Now, a couple of things to point out here. There's a lot of pushing potential here for Red Team. They've dedicated to just Gaslo in the bot, who drops down all these little turrets around, continues to pressure with damage, while Abathur is able to send Zerglings up the middle and support the rest of his team. Wow, Abathur playing a great move there. He jumps right into Nova. She got a little bit in trouble with Raynor, and that gave her a shield, which really protected her from any follow-up attacks. There's Stitches grabbing the watchtower, and it looks like he's going to do so uncontested. It's a vital watchtower to watch between those two lanes. Whoever controls that watchtower can see what's going on. Rainer in trouble again. There's oh! the hook. Stitches going off. Abathur hitting him. He gets Tyrael with the save. Unbelievable, wow. and Rainer escapes. So what Tyrael just did there is he has an ability that actually puts a shield on his teammate, and it absorbs the damage that the other team does to him and confers it onto Tyrael with a little bit of a debuff applied to it. So pretty good stuff there. Tyrael with a very clutch save as it looks like, uh, well, Falstead was all but dead. Right, so we're looking at the levels at the top of the screen. You can see the team levels on the left hand and right side of the screen. It's five for blue, six for red. A little bit of advantage to red here. The coins are now even at five to five for both teams as Stitches dances around here against Falstad and Tyrael. All right, so I'm trying to see if anyone has any coins right now. And it looks like Kerrigan has a couple, and she could potentially make her way up to drop those off. As we mentioned before, once you get to 10 coins, Blackheart is going to start launching cannons out of that uh, uh, out of that ghost ship in the middle of the map and start putting pressure on towns. Wow, they're trying to grab a cramp there, but it got interrupted. Kerrigan with Abathur on her. She pulls everybody in. Tyrion in a little bit of trouble there. He's picking down. He goes. If he can get close, he can explode and do a lot of damage. Everybody dances away, Ooh. scattering away from Tyrion. Absolutely vital you pull it off. 
You do not want to be standing next to the ghost material. And it looks like Red is going to grab a couple of coins. Ooh, yeah, they grab coins from their opponent's side of the map, which is a really yep. nice objective steal. And the treasure chests have come back right now. So it's going to be a fight for uh, uh, for not just these treasure chests, but also for vision of the map. Wow, Red has got a great position here on these chests. There's a grab. Oh! Oh! And down goes Ballstat. Red in a commanding position here, grabbing all of those coins, doing wonderful, amazing Red team with the red shirt and the red team I was with you guys the I whole don't time. wanna hear it, Dustin. <laughs> All right, come on, Blue, I know you can do this. All right, rest of Blue coming. No, actually, they can't do this. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm gonna back away. Look at the coins scattering around. They're in so much trouble here right now. Red trying to get the drop off in this position. I think they've got enough coins. It looks like they do two and three and seven on Kerrigan. Wow, Kerrigan's really gonna be carrying those coins around for most of the game. Once you drop off 10, Blackheart goes away, and you've gotta hold those coins until he appears again. So Kerrigan is a target right now. She's got 20 coins on her. She's gotta be careful. And there's the blast powering through those towns. Terrible, terrible damage from Blackheart. There it is, and uh, this is just going to continue to ping away here. This is going to give Red a significant amount of pushing power. It's completely taking out these towers as well. There's a little bit of health left on that last one. Still no kills. Uh, still no kills have been recorded actually by our red side. And I'm getting a little, or by our blue side, I'm getting a little bit scared for them right now as they don't have control of the map. They don't have control of coins and uh, no map vision as well. And they're down a level as well yeah. at this point. They're one level behind, which is not the end of the world, but it's getting kind of critical. Whoa, closing in on Tassar. Tassar has an ability. He can sort of go phase shift. So he's kind of hard to gank in that way. He used the ability at the right time. Red with the Siege Giants now pushing bottom as well. And oh, Tyrion, a little bit of a bind here. He's got Stitches and Nova closing in, but his allies are right there with him. Well, you know, they kind of just ran around him. But still, <laughs> they were nearby, and that's what counts. They could have they come could in to help, but they didn't. Um, all right, so Red Team has pretty good control once again, and they have another 10 coins right away because Kerrigan was actually able to deposit right now. She runs in, doing quite a bit of damage to Rainer. Rainer falls, Teriel trying to get away, but the ghost ship is already going. Diablo charges in from the side. He's laying out pretty good damage. Teriel jumps right back on top, too, but that alone is not going to be enough. Wow, Blue suddenly pushing back really hard. Kerrigan in a lot of trouble, even though she's got Abbott there. Oh, Diablo cannot quite pull it off. He doesn't like the turret, and he backs away. Kerrigan snakes away, barely escaping what was certain destruction, and that top town is absolutely getting hampered by Blackheart. Well, down here in the bottom town, the Siege Giants go completely uncontested. They're going to trash the front line before Blue moves to engage. All right, so that's two frontline sets of towers that are completely destroyed. No, all three now as the cannon continues to fire at this town here up at the top lane. So Red's doing a very nice job right now. They're up a level, but they're continuing to take objective control, and that's really key right now. All of these different groups of minions all have different abilities. Some drop coins, some are siege minions that push for your team in a particular lane. One, this Grave Golem that you just saw here up at the top is an extremely powerful minion that has an ability to push down towns just by itself. Absolutely wonderful job, though. That's exactly what going for this grave golems make a huge difference if they can grab it and they're moving into position for doing it. it looks like blue team has sort of sniffed it out you can see they're moving forward right now trying to get in position here they come are they going to see it in time i don't think they're quite gathered up enough to deal with this no it looks like they're trying to move into position though diablo tyriel and rainer are ready to engage there's the ultimate from rainer drops down the battle cruiser is dealing got some pretty good damage red team finally his heroes killed but blue is just taking over oh! at this point Unbelievable! He saw the bar seesawing back and forth, and they fought for control of the Grave Goal, and Blue gets it! Unbelievable! They absolutely needed at that point to stay in this game and remain competitive, and they get the kills. They got three down on Red, and Blue is pushing hard now on top lane. And they've also got seven coins right now, which means if they take objectives smartly, they can gather up a few additional ones, run back and deposit them, and get that ghost ship firing for him once again. Poor Gazlo here is trying to hold the position. He's got Aberthur with him. He's, they get, he's powering up the super shot there. He gets off a good hit, but it's not really enough to protect this position. Here comes Red streaming in to engage. Let's see what they decide to do. We got Nova there up top. They drop the town. Blue playing it exactly right. It's going to scatter. Kerrigan closing in. Oh. Falstad triple tap on Falstad. Down he goes. And Red looking for some revenge for that destroyed top town are in hot pursuit. Rainer there with the skill shot pushing back Kerrigan. All right, so that wasn't bad, and the Grave Golem is going to get neutralized now, but not before it did a significant amount of damage. And very importantly, we see that the, that level difference was completely made up. Blue now with a level advantage, 12 to 11. Yeah, huge turnaround, and there's the coin drop as well. Blue on the counterattack at this point, what looked like an absolutely 
crushing red victory was on its way and suddenly blue is coming back blue i was with you the whole time you guys are awesome that's, dustin you that's don't that's do you don't do you don't do that right now <laughs> All right, guys, uh, so let's take a look at things. Ghost Ship is still firing. Looks like it just used the, the rest of its salvo there. That town is very nearly destroyed. It won't take much of an effort from Blue, especially if they can grab a good siege minion camp or something like that to continue pushing that town. And here goes Stitches trying to grab some coins here. He's in a safe enough position to attempt it. This is going to cost him some time in the lane, but I think it's absolutely worth it at this point. There's a couple of coins for him. And back towards the top, the treasure chest has spawned. It looks like Gazzle's having trouble controlling the position. Here comes uh, Diablo as well, and Ooh. Nova. Wow, big fight developing here. Gazzle in a little bit of trouble, tries to dance away. Tyrion's gonna drop him. There's Diablo dancing with Nova a little bit, and it looks like Blue is going to gain control of that treasure chest. Absolutely vital at this stage of the game. That was a great move by Tyrion. He actually used his ultimate to come in and charge and stun Gazlo there for a little bit, then immediately followed it up with his Q, which actually plants a sword in the ground. Then if he uses his Q again, he can jump right back to it. So he was ensuring that he was doing damage the whole time. Really well played. Wow, and there's Kerrigan hiding out there in the smog, in the, in the smoke right there. Nobody can see her hiding out right there. She's trying to look she can pick up a kill. Nova's in there as well. Tyrion's sort of dancing around the position. It looks like Tyrion's going to come through safely. Oh, Kerrigan wants a piece of him. She closes in. Abathur jumping inside Tyrion. It's really three. Oh, wow, there's the ultimate from Raynor. Calling down a blast from Falstead from below. Red is on the run. Unbelievable. Down goes one, and it looks like Kerrigan is in a lot of trouble. Oh, Kerrigan man. Killing, and Kerrigan killed by Rainer. The coins drop, and Blue pushing aggressively as Red runs for their lives. And they've actually got ten coins right now between Diablo and Tyrael here. So once again, this ghost ship is going to be activated if Red can't prevent this drop, and it doesn't look like anyone is in position to do that. So the ghost ship is going to fire, and Blue just continues to build that advantage. All right, let's see if they can push uh, a couple of objectives on the back of this. This town's going to fall immediately. Bye-bye. Fort goes <laughs> down. Uh, that only took one shot, actually, yeah. so that's going to maximize the amount of damage that this, uh, these cannon shots do. Wow, Blue pushing all over the place at this point. If you look at the top, Blue has the level advantage once again. Red had been so dominant early in the game, is really struggling to come back together. They have grabbed some siege giants there for Red, but really, this is not where they want to be fighting them. Blue is already in a commanding position. The siege giants are going to go down very quickly. It looks like they're going to lose in their town. Unbelievable. Tyrael drops. He's trying to close in to get an explosion to go off. Wow. Big hit on Nova. She's got to get out of there. Diablo on the hunt. Down goes Nova. Unbelievable. Two heroes down for red as blue pushes this bottom lane. And Stitches did activate his ultimate. That's that poison trail that you see behind him, and it's doing a lot of damage to Diablo and Falstead, and they really have to back out of there. Thankfully, they get away before too much damage is done, and red can get back into lane. Yeah, that was absolutely the right move. They'd push as far as they were going to go there, and they're very close to losing a whole bunch of heroes. It is time to go. They've made their point, and now they got to get out. Oh, and the Hearthstone back right to the face. <laughs> and unfortunately, a that charge from Gaslow from Gaslow yeah, just, just, like, just ah, goes off and hits nothing. Take one of those. You can see the uh, tumors there being spawned by Abathur. That gives him vision of that location. Anybody who steps on those will take some additional damage. So it's a great way for Abathur to get a little bit of map control. Abathur, right now, you can see that green shield was briefed there watching over Stitches as he, Stitches was moving the map. Stitches again going for the uh, creep camp in the other team's half. Absolutely bold and brave move. Yeah, but I really like it. Um, this in the early part of this game when Red did have a pretty good advantage, that's what they were capitalizing on. They were jumping in, stealing their opponent's minion caps, keeping pressure up all across on the back of Abathur's shields. Uh, but unfortunately, they haven't been able to get that game plan off because they've lost every team fight since. Yeah, it was exactly the right here to do it with two stitches. It's really tough. He's very hard to sort of close in and kill. Oh, Nova trying to drop off two coins. Doesn't quite pull it off. She's in a lot of trouble. That's not her happy place. Abathur jumps in and tries to bail her out, but it's not nearly enough. Blue driving Red back. Gaining control of uh, the, uh, the black of Blackheart there, and it looks like they're gonna drop up another five coins, taking five to four. Yeah, so once again, a majority of the coins held, and another set of uh, shots from that ghost ship is going to push down at least one more town. I'd say two, honestly, at this point. And with those siege minions that Blue has down at the bot, it's going to force Red to react. But you see they're all out of position. Everyone from Red is trying to take these minion camps so they can continue pushing themselves. That's a pretty critical camp they just grabbed right there. You can push with those. There's an aura around them. You can see the aura that actually buffs uh, all of your allies, including your heroes. It's a very powerful way to push. Let's see if Red can capitalize if they're going to be distracted and have to deal with something else. Blue pushing here towards the bottom of his position, trying to pull right away from those guys' stitches, just taking a fishing hook in there to see what he could grab. I got to hand it to Abathur, though, sitting there in top lane. He's just pushing circlings all day long. He's, kinda, he's trying to get those towns down, and he's doing an effective job of it. Uh, Red is actually making a very nice push here, uh, but the problem is is that Blue, in the bot lane, has almost moved entirely into, the, uh, into their opponent's base. 
And you can see the level difference is getting a little bit scary here. At 17 for blue and only 15 for red. This is critical. They've got to win the next team fight, or they've got to spread out sufficiently. They can start collecting more experience. There's some seed shines pushing in the bottom position right there. Red's going to take them out. Blue, though, is absolutely in a commanding position. Let's see what they can do with it. Another blast from Blackheart, and that town is almost gone. Yeah, they're about to the point where they can start pushing directly through mid, just take down that town, and then move through and start attacking the core directly. But now, Blue Team has put themselves in another good position to move up and try and recapture that Grave Golem. If they go after that, they're going to have plenty of pressure in the other lanes on the back of Siege Minions and such that they'll be able to push through and at least kill a town. Oh, Kerrigan just jumps straight in and gets obliterated! Oh. Unbelievable. Three heroes down already for red. Blue in a commanding position. They're going to be able to grab that gray golem and go ahead by the advantage. Only got Abathur and Stitches are the only people left on the field that could even do anything at this point. And you can see at this level, at level 17, how quickly that Grave Golem is going to drop. That's absolutely right. Stitches is just kind of running around mid lane right now, fighting back waves of minions, but uh, he's kind of a man without a home, to be honest. He's going after mercenary camps, but there's not much else to do what right now. What going to be doing at this point? Like he's getting some experience points for his team, trying to come out, catch up, and this is this is the moment. Blue's uh, got a little bit of damage there, but not enough to really matter. And they're going to start pushing in at this top lane. This could be the decisive move of the game right here. They could ride that Grave Golem like a pony all the way to victory. All right, here comes Blue, and uh, Abathur, bless his heart, he's pushing away in bot lane, but unfortunately it's not going to end up doing too much. He's going to have to teleport back, he's going to have to to support his teammates here in just a second, because that Grave Golem is powerful, and this town is about to fall. He is absolutely coming, Red gathering up, they got enough heroes to play, they can do something, can they possibly oh! kill? Diablo drops, absolutely critical kill them for this point. Can they pick off anybody else? The Grave Golem going to town on that position, Gazlo just spamming the turrets as much as he possibly can, and Blue, not liking the look of things, is going to back away, giving Red a a little bit of chance to recover. Serial was tanky there, but Diablo was their most tanky person. So once he went down, they didn't have a lot of frontline power to be able to stand in and engage against the power of the towns, uh, the the, uh, the actual towers themselves. Abathur continues to push down here too. And the nice thing about Abathur is that he's continuing to absorb experience for his team down there, continuing to push lanes and making sure that his team doesn't fall too far out of this. Abathur just sold that bottom lane pretty much all by himself, using his Zerglings and a talent that buffed them. Oh, here comes Blackheart blasting away. Oh my goodness. Oh, what a tragedy. Red loses another time to that position. Red is a little bit scattered right now, it looks like. We've got three sort of in the bottom lane with blue closing in around them. I don't know if like this, uh, this matchup at this point. There's one hero up top. Blue is going to grab, uh, oh, Red, a little fishing attempt there from Stitches at that camp. He doesn't get anything. Right, that was a line of sight blocker, so Stitches didn't know that he was about to walk into his impending doom, so right. thankfully he turned away. Even the grab would have been enough of initiation that he probably would have ended up falling. But I think this is now four to one ghost ships in favor of uh, Blue at the moment, and they are starting to run away with objective control. That experience just keeps getting pushed up. There's another fort, and I think we only have one fort remaining now. Yes, indeed. For red team. You know, at this point, the next uh, the next grab of Blackheart could be the deciding factor at this point. Uh, Stitch is just pitching like crazy, hoping to catch somebody. He doesn't really want to close across that line. Oh, wow, and here comes another blast. This is going to be absolutely ferocious. This is actually attacking blue oh, team, right. though. Totally yeah, is. Red was able to actually get in and finally drop off some coins. So Abathur's pushing in the top, and he's actually got quite a minion wave going there to deal some damage out. Blue is going to concentrate all their efforts on bot lane, though, and try and take out that remaining fort. Wow, this is look really tough here in the bottom lane. Red is in position to try to defend, but they got a lot of forces in the area. Now the cannonballs are blasting away at blue. Red making a blue making a big push down here. It looks like oh wow, big hit going on. Everybody's in total position. Oh, and there's the Hyperion blasting away those top two towers. As they're going to go down, huge charge forward. Oh, Diablo getting very frisky there. Abathur right on the position with stitches. He's going to drop absolutely down. He goes. Oh, wait, no, he's still up. Yeah, Diablo and Tyrael both tried to move in there, and they're both going to die as a result. Tyrael falls as well. Can he get close enough to Stitches? Stitches tried to use oh. the fountain to heal back up, but it wasn't enough, and he ends up dying. Wow, that's a huge turn at this point. Look at that. We got three heroes down for blue. Four, Four. heroes for blue. Only one down for red. This is what they need to get back in this game. The level difference is evened out at 19 to 18. They got to do it more. Red is feeling, I can hear these guys over here. They're going, go, go, go. They're really feeling they've got a position, and they're going to try to do something here. It looks like, see where they're headed. No, no, they don't have to do anything. Tell them to stop. Tell them to stop, though. Uh, Core is actually under attack, so they had to retreat momentarily just to be able to clear out the minions that were pressuring in. They're trying to move back out, establish objective control, deposit some more coins so they can keep that ghost ship firing, because that is what's really going to bring them back. They've already brought this level gap, though, down to just one.
Yeah, that's absolutely amazing. And Abathur at top is just a one-man army up there. Look at him. He's got all these Zerglings, all these Locusts spawning. He's creating all of this trouble, and he continues to push that position while at the same time he's absolutely helping his teammates by jumping in and infesting them. There's the infestation right there on Gazlo. You can barely see it as he comes onto the screen. And boy, they've got enough coins yes, here for another Yes, they do. Job. Yes, they do. And the forts are starting to fall for blue. They've been at three for a while, but now they're all significantly weakened. One more series of shots here from the ghost ship probably will take down not just one, but maybe even too. Yeah, it's quite possible. I gotta tell you, these guys are absolutely playing their heart out right now. Everybody really wants to win this game. They're really, really pushing themselves. A lot of our practice games weren't nearly this close. Wow, another blast. That one's definitely going down. Unbelievable, they managed to come back into this game and really put themselves in a position where they could still absolutely come back. They could totally win this game right now. No, Blue's got it. Let's hear the Blue supporters out there. That's what I like. Oh, wow, that's, that's weaker than last time. I'm actually kind of scared now. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> Red gathering up there, it looks like, in the middle lane. Looking for a team fight that they can win. They want to win this one. Tyrael jumping forward right there, getting off the hit. There's another charge in from Diablo. Abathur in position. Oh, Ooh. wow, the ultimate's firing off left and right as uh, Red sort of scatters away. They're a little bit divided now. They're in different locations. Everybody's a little bit wounded. Blue doing very, very well in these team fights every time they fight. Yeah, Gaslow and Kerrigan were able to sneak away with just a tiny bit of health, though, because if they had fallen, I have no doubt that Blue would have been able to finish and just rock the core immediately. Abathur, though, he's, he's, he's still doing it. He's in the pot lane. He's continuing to push with his Zerglings. This is the power of this champion. And he's actually put a lot of his talents into this, so he's really helping his team out there by focusing on this Locust. He has actually been a one-man army. Okay, this is a big push, guys. you got to watch oh! this one. Oh! 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 Absolutely what? critical kill. Kerrigan in a little bit of trouble. She's going to dance her way back to home base so she can get healed up. Oh! oh, oh, oh. Kerrigan oh. falls as well. No, he gets away. I can't believe it. Oh, wow. There's pursuit there in the backfield. False that shield trying to do some damage here. Oh, down goes Tassadar. And Blue suddenly in trouble with two heroes down. Still two heroes down for Red. The death timers at this point getting very, very lengthy as they tried to push against the red core, and they are ultimately once again driven back. Now, this is a very important point. It's level 20 to level 19. Level 20 is when you get the Hero of the Storm powers. These powers are incredibly dangerous. This is a break point. They can get something done now. They can absolutely win this game. Oh, Stitch is in a lot of trouble. He's getting away. Tyrael going in for the battle. Oh, my Ooh. goodness. Drop. Yeah. Another great ultimate from Tyrael once again. And at the same time, he drops his shield on Raynor, and Raynor's not taking any damage. Tyrael's taking it all. Three members down for red, two members down for blue. Hyperion comes in one more time. There's the core! Oh. Well, that was a fun game. I'm okay. I'm okay. I can make it. Breathe, Dustin. Okay. Breathe. There's, oh, there's enough oxygen in here. It's absolutely, oh, it's exhausting. Yes, all it right. is. So while these guys are setting up the next game, I want you guys to help me with something. These are all the designers that are, well, not all the designers, this is most of the designers that are on the team. We all sit in the bullpen together. And there was a designer that was supposed to be here today. Kent Eric Hagman was supposed to be here today. This is one of the designers that helped make a lot of these maps that you guys are here playing at BlizzCon today. Kent had a fairly painful bicycle accident and he broke his arm and so he was unable to come here and play today and we are missing Kent absolutely severely. Could you guys do me a favor and give a big round of applause for Kent Eric Hagman. Thank you guys, you guys are absolutely awesome. BlizzCon is the best. Yeah, it absolutely is. And it looks like we're going to move to our next map, which is going to be Haunted Mines. Now, a lot of the battlegrounds that you're going to see, of course, uh, all feature different legendary objectives, and they have a very different focus on each one of them. Last time, we obviously revolved around grabbing doubloons, going towards Blackheart's uh, uh, ship, depositing them, and trying to go. Now we're in the mines, though. And a little bit into the game, there's going to be a couple of entrances that actually pop out that you can jump into and start trying to accumulate a large grave golem of yourself. We'll explain more, though, once we get into the battleground. Yeah, so this is one of the weirdest maps that we yep. have done yet. This is the battleground that was the furthest along. We, we did this one last, and this was, you know, we started with stuff that was a little bit closer to the types of games we've all been playing before, and we worked our way up to this one, um, and we've really gotten to a place where it feels like it really makes you play differently. It really sort of challenges how you play the game. This is very much a competitive dungeon. You're going to go deep underground, you're going to be looking to collect skulls from skeletons, and the other team is down there as well. So while you're dealing with all of the monsters down there, you're also dealing with all the other sneaky guys coming up behind you, trying to get in your way and wipe you out. Now most of the monsters you're going to find here, most of the skeletons, 
They're not too challenging. They're mostly there to drain away your resources and distract you, but there is a grave golem down there that is sort of a boss encounter. And that guy's a lot more serious. You need a group of players to deal with that grave golem, and that's usually when the other team sneaks up behind you and either tries to steal, steal the skulls or tries to stab you in the back while you're trying to fight the monster. That's absolutely right. So every minion that you fight in the mines drops skulls. And when that grave golem is finally toppled, the, uh, the golems that spawn for each team are proportional in strength to the amount of skulls that you gathered. So if one team gathers 75 skulls, the other team uh, gathers 25, well, the team with 75 is going to do a lot more damage with their grave golem. And then you have a really difficult choice. Do you want to protect your golem? Do you want to stop their golem? And to what degree? And you really see these teams are trying to put together a strategy in about three or four seconds, really, once they come back to the surface. Who's going to go where? Who's going to deal with what? What's the other team going to do? What are their compositions going to be in each of the lanes? And they're going to try to figure it out very quickly to make the right move. And it can be very challenging to get that right. But the team that does that is going to have a huge, huge advantage. That's right. So as Dustin is suggesting, you have to split your attention between both levels as well. Because don't forget, the primary objective remains the same. You still are trying to take out your opponent's forts and thus their, their core. But the problem is, is that if you focus too much time in one area, you give up big disadvantages in the other. So you really have to split your difference. So the other sort of last little tidbit that's vital on this map is when that Grave Golem goes down, he will spawn wherever he died. That's right. So that means you really want to drop this guy well away from your base, if possible. As soon as you can kill him, that's more time you have when the Grave Golem spawns again. And if you let it go, if you let him get really close, and you'll see scenarios in this map sometimes where you'll have a Grave Golem right next to the palace for each of the teams. And we know that next Grave Golem, whoever gets the biggest one, actually, even if you don't, we've almost had base right. races on this map. Yeah, absolutely. Where whoever gets the biggest Grave Golem at that point is totally going to dominate. And then there's sometimes at the very end of the game, there's some shenanigans where maybe we're going to let you get the Golem. Because we think while you're down there in the mines, you're messing around with golems, maybe we can push the top lane and we can get something done at the bottom lane or whatever it is. And so you'll see teams make a strategic choice sometimes to completely ignore the objective and just focus on what they can get done up top. And if they don't, if they don't get it done, suddenly they're really going to suffer when that golem appears. And the Grave Golem isn't the only objective that you're taking on this map, too. There are plenty of camps of minions that you can use to start pushing for your team. The Siege Minions that we had talked about before, and different various camps that you can take to help pushing on top. So you really have to split your focus there, too. Yeah, it's only a two-lane map, but there's still a lot of attention to be focused. All right, so these teams are gathered up here, and they are ready to go. Whew, I think I can survive one more, maybe. I think we're going to see a blue 2-0. <laughs> that would be amazing. <laughs> I'm not liking what I'm hearing here. Where are my blue supporters at? See, see, like, Come on, when they Red! Let them hear you! These headphones aren't very good. They totally heard that. That's awesome. That's awesome. All right. So these teams are going to line up for us here. We've got blue team here, and they've brought uh, Tinker. They've brought Malfurion. They've brought Arthas. They've brought Sonya and Kerrigan again. Looking good there for blue team. That's a couple of warriors, a support, a DPS, and a siege hero in position. On the other side of the map, we've got red with Uther. We've got the witch doctor, Naziba. We've got ETC doing a little jig. We've got Illidan, the, the betrayer, and we've got another demon hunter, two demon hunters side by side here for red team. All right. Well, we'll see what uh, this team composition is kind of interesting, though, because that we've got a siege minion here, or, or sorry, a siege hero here in the Ziba that's going to be able to aggressively push down objectives very efficiently. But we have two Five, huge damage four, dealers in Vala and Illidan. Three, yeah, two, Vala is absolutely three, ferocious. She's my hero of choice these days like when not playing as Nova. Two. She can be so aggressive. She can just absolutely sustain in a lane like you wouldn't believe. Her whirlwind ability allows her to leech life from enemy minions, and she can really just. She's very tenacious, she's very tough, and I'll add as well, because she's fury-based, she doesn't have to expend a lot of energy killing things with an area effect ability like fury. She can be in the mine, she's a great hero for this map. All right, so Blue quickly takes control of Vision here over towards the top lane, and they start to disperse as we have, uh, looks like, what do we have down here? Naziba, Uther, and oh, there was another minion over, or there was another hero over there. Was it, sorry? Thank you, Illidan, Uther, and uh, uh, Naziba down here on the bot lane starting to push. They're coming up against Malfurion, Sonya, and Kerrigan. 
All right, here in the top lane, it looks like it's a pretty even fight between all of these heroes. Oh, wow, there's a big push down there in the bottom lane, or excuse me, yeah, in the, in the bottom lane, they're pushing him back. Red's not doing too well here. Blue is uh, absolutely in a good position, driving back red. They want to maintain control of that mine entrance. You can see it right there next to the train tracks. You want to maintain control of that so you can be first down in the mines, and then when the enemy comes down, you can sometimes get off a couple of easy hits before they manage to escape. That's right. It does take a couple of seconds for you to pop down into the mines, and it's pretty clear that you can see uh, when uh, uh, heroes are starting to move down there. ETC jumps in, does a little bit of dispersion, not able to get in that much damage, though. Uh, Arthas coming right back with a bit of stun for his own. Vala gets in some damage, but Arthas is quickly given a little shield. Yeah, ETC can be fairly fearless in this kind of situation. He's got a lot of mobility powers, and he's in a position. Oh, wow, good hook there from Kerrigan, pulling in both, both characters. Uther in a little bit of trouble here. He's one of the hardest heroes in the game to kill, honestly, even as a support. His self heals really keep him in the game so you want to go for Uther in some ways but in some ways you kind of don't yeah in some ways he's very difficult to drop and you can end up wasting a lot of damage just trying to drop him while he sort of walks away and heals himself back up to full and that is the most frustrating thing I've had playing this game so far yes I'm gonna kill Uther no, no he walks no, away not. for the 400th time in a row Thanks. we have heroes you know support heroes like Malfurion much more vulnerable much right. more fragile can totally be dropped Uther hiding Ooh. out there in the bushes. That's Kerrigan doesn't like you. She's going to go in there. Yeah, she's going to risk it. Uther just sort of dancing away. Now Furion trying to get the grab on Uther doesn't manage to do it. All right, so let's take a look here at the top lane as well as it looks like that uh, the engagements had kind of settled for a while. ETC does manage to heal himself back up. Uh, Vala actually only sitting around at half health, and ETC is going to start uh, transitioning down to try and take vision. But the problem is because Blue already knew about that, Arthas comes right in and just whacks him over the head with a sword. That was quite a wind-up for Arthas. <laughs> Pop in there, just lining him up for the shot. ETC does maintain control of the watchtower. You can see Gazlos feeling like the mines are about to open. You can see the timer there at the top of the map indicating to all of these players that the mines will open in another 24 seconds. This gives everybody time to sort of figure out what they want to do. Blue, it looks to me like reasonably good control of the mine entrances. Not, yes. Not commanding, not commanding, but still good position, and they're in a pretty happy place. Sonny just hanging down their bushes now, waiting for some damage to do. ETC in a little bit of trouble here, as it looks like three heroes closing in for the kill. He uses his mobility to escape. Vala vaulting away. Blue gaining the position, red scattering away. So two interesting things happening right now. The mines are open, and our teams can actually have entrance to those. Red actually backed off and tried to take minions to get to push because they knew that Blue had control of the mines. But with that uh, rotation down from ETC and Vala, it gave some pressure in the bot lane to allow, oh, Arthas just takes away. Kill. Wow, and what a bloodbath they come into. It looks like Demon Hunter, Vala's in a lot of trouble right there. Down she goes. One hero down for red already. What well, Basanya is spinning in circles, damaging everyone she get her hands on. Killidan running for his life along with ETC. Kerrigan wants to kill so bad that she gets one in ETC. And oh. down goes Bala as well. We got two heroes down for red and blue pushing down there through the dungeon. Blue is pushing, but look at what Uther's doing up here. Because of the siege minions that Red took just before the mines had opened, Uther has quite a bit of an ability to start uh, striking against these towns. As we mentioned before, though, there are 100 skulls to be gathered down here in these mines, and 24 already belong to Blue. Yeah, Blue is absolutely in a commanding position at this point. Red doesn't even have anybody in the mines. They just had the first guy come down below. And Blue is doing the smart thing. They're not going for skulls. They're going directly for the Grave Gaon. I haven't seen too much of this, but I thought we should be doing this for weeks, and they're finally doing it. That's awesome. They're going right for the Grave Gaon. They're ignoring the skulls. Red, oh, i got to get some skulls. And they're down there looking for them. Meanwhile, look at all these skulls spilling out. Woo! Candy, candy for everybody. It's Christmas, and it's a Christmas of skulls for Blue. And that's 54 skulls to 8 right now, so no matter what happens, when this Grave Golem actually does spawn, it is going to be more powerful for blue right now. Oh, red look is at red, let's, where's the boss? What happened? <laughs> He's all gone. Now, there's still a few blue heroes down here, and red is on their mounts, and they're in hot pursuit. Oh, I think they make it a couple kills here. I think they're in a little bit of trouble. Yeah, I mean, honestly, at this point, with 63 skulls already, oh, Kerrigan's actually going to die for this, but she dies for her team. Um, and red's not really in a position to be able to aggressively move back up and start counter-pushing against what blue is doing. And blue is already going to have the more powerful golem, so not a bad trade for them at all, even with Kerrigan dying. Yeah, that was absolutely a good move. It really helped Sonya get away, honestly, at that point. I think that was absolutely the right move to turn and, and distract all those heroes and rather than lose both of you just lose one and she picked oh, yeah. her moment just perfectly there all right so blue doing a good thing once again they're trying to take more minion camps right now like i said before there are several objectives that you kind of have to uh decide and prioritize out uh blue did a great job early on of going through the mines this is the last goal that's going to be gathered the grave golem will start spawning here in just a little bit but blue's doing a nice job not just with that more powerful grave golem but taking many objectives across the map and continuing to push in multiple lanes yeah this thing makes it a lot more complicated for red to have to deal with these siege giants at the same time they're dealing with the golem you can see some pretty big armies of creatures happening you can see the 
summoning happening at the top of the screen. The bars are counting up as the summon of the Grave Golem is going to start to, ha start to happen. If you look at the levels at the top of the screen, we've got eight for blue, seven for red. Still pretty even on the levels, but that's going to be quite a ferocious push, I think, in that top lane with those Siege Giants. Yeah, that's absolutely right. Uh, Naziba trying to do whatever. Well, no, actually, he's not trying to do whatever he can. He just runs away from the siege minions. He doesn't care. Look uh, at the size of that grave golem. That is one of the biggest grave golems I've seen in weeks. Yeah. These big blue crystals. Let's take a look at the uh, grave golem on the other side of the map. He's pretty good. <laughs> it's, no, uh, nothing wrong with that grave golem. That is, that is yeah. a good looking grave golem right there. I think I think I think the blue golem is trying to overcompensate for I something. I'm not sure. <laughs> um, all right, so this is a full five-man push with a grave golem down here for blue. So he's actually going to get in there and start tanking these towers, and he just doesn't care. You see how much health he actually has. It's going to take a really concerted effort from red here, with only uh, all five are actually down there to try and push this back. I really like this move. All in this position here, they're in a powerful position. They're going to follow this grave golem, try to get as much damage as they can get down. They're risking some damage in the top lane, but with that grave golem being so small. I don't think it's that much of a risk. Blue absolutely pushing in. Watch for their pop here. Blue's going to hit level 10 before red at level 8. That's going to give Blue access to their heroic abilities first, which could be absolutely pivotal in the coming team fight. Oh. Depending on when it manages to pop. Wow, big, big battle here in the middle of the board. And Uther walks away like he always does. Um, all right, so the rest of Blue's moving through right now. Uther just can't stand and engage. He has to continue to heal himself over and over again. But this is a fort that could likely fall here in a second if, if Blue just decides to continue uh, pounding away at it. It looks like they will get it. Let's check in top lane, though, and see how that Grave Golem is is doing for red. It's doing almost as much damage, it's to be honest. Well. Unopposed, it's not too bad. It still has good damage. You see blue scattering away. They feel like they made their point here in the bottom lane. They got the town that they wanted. And looks like they're going to move up to deal with that Grave Golem in the top lane before it finally drops their town. Yeah, to be totally honest, that wa that wasn't as bad for Red as that could have been, you know? Um, they're able to gain quite a bit here. They they, they wrecked the, the, the front of the town. Both the tower's gone. The gate is gone. The healing well is gone. And now we're just left with the, uh, the actual fort itself. Yeah, I really like that choice by uh, by Blue to push it as far as they did and then move off. And there's another camp grabbed by Red and another, it looks like. That's really, really great move by these guys. Very aggressive considering their position. I like this response when they're down uh, two levels. Okay, but Blue's going to come charging in. And are they going to be able to disrupt this? It doesn't look like it. Ooh, Castle actually just waiting in the bushes. Ooh. And Vala sneaks on by. Will Arthas oh. have enough stun? There's the oh. oh, Castle does some damage. Oh. So he comes back in for the kill. There we oh, have it. Vala terrifying. just melts. Oh, my goodness. It was a horrible, horrible moment. There's Kerrigan's a little bit of trouble. She pops her heroic ability. Malfurion popping his heroic ability. Everybody having a big battle here right around this team camp. Oh, wow, and there's a great move by Witch Doctor channeling that, uh, that ultimate into that position in red. A little bit of trouble here, trying to dance away. It was kind of a weird place for everybody to decide to die. And a great jump happen. in by Sonya right there. She actually stuns up uh, both Nuziva and Uther, but Uther walks away again. Never mind, I'm sorry. Away. He's totally fine. It's not a problem. <laughs> oh, Uther. Um, all right, so it's a two-level advantage now for Blue. And, uh, you know, I mean, once those mines come back up again, there's going to be some serious contention down there. And honestly, I, I think Red almost has to make a gambit and just go for that Grave Golem right now. They're, they're, they're losing quite a bit up top. They've not had any success there. They've got to split Blue's attention. Whoa! There's Illidan going for the kill. Oh! oh. And he skates away in the dungeon. Illidan wants blood. Here he goes. He's in hot pursuit. I don't think Kazlo can escape from Illidan. Wonderful, wonderful movie. He attempts to use the uh, dungeon that it juke away, but it doesn't save him. All right, so Red now is uh, in the mines, but Blue is using this as an opportunity to try and move back in. ETC just jumps right in and ults on top of everyone. Blue members falling all over the place, and Red is making a big stand. Whoa, Blue, Sonya trying to get away, just spinning away, trying to escape. She's in pursuit by another another Diablo character in pursuit. The demon hunter's chasing her down. Meanwhile, it looks like Arthas is a little bit of trouble there. Looks like he's managed to get away. Now he's going head-to-head -head against Demon Hunter. No, Arthas, this is not your happy place, buddy. There are way too many red heroes around. Good move, and there's the kill from Demon Hunter. All right, so let's see if Red is actually just hightailing it for the mines right now. They've got a few seconds before most of the members of Red come back up. But he, or I'm sorry, the blue come back up. But here's the problem for Red. They've got a few members that are pretty low yeah, in health right now. Really this is up. a risky maneuver to try and gather these goals. 
They're very beat up, but Uther is moving into position. He's going to be a little out of place. He's going into the bottom location instead of the top, so he just popped down bottom. Red in pretty good commanding control of the mines at this point. They're hoovering up the skulls. They're up by 11. Blue is streaming in. They want to try to get something done. They have enough heroes that they can get down there, and as you said before, Red is still a little beat up down there. You can see the health bars at the top of the screen. Bala is a little bit hurt. ETC is a little bit hurt. Uh, Illidan is a little bit hurt. This is not their happy place for what is inevitably going to be a game-turning battle in these mines. Yeah, and if they were going to come down here, they had to gather a majority of those skulls right now. They've come close. They're already at 42 right now, but we'll see if they can get the rest. Okay, blue gathering up. Oh man, you can see the battle developing on that mini-map around that boss. The last blue hero is finally coming down. Everybody's gathered in position. Oh wow. Oh, a very interesting maneuver Shh. right there. And we won't see anything Everything else about is it, normal. Apparently. These headphones aren't that good. We gotta pretend. No, I understand. <laughs> so, so yeah. So blue in in position out here. Red has decided they've got enough that they've evened up the battle and they can get more done up top. I love this move. Yeah. They've absolutely played it correctly. It's basically gonna be even in skulls no matter what happens at this point. That's right. So they gained a good advantage. They got out with all of their damaged heroes. They could potentially even move back in and try and take a couple more skulls. Now nah, looks like they're just gonna take minion camps. I love this actually oh, this is because so they're good. continuing to press their advantage. The the uh, uh, grave golems are going to spawn here in just a second, but there's still a few few minions to actually kill down here. There we go, finally, all the skulls are gathered, but Red is pushing pretty aggressively up top. I love that move, because they weren't confident they could win the team right. fight. They were very beat up. They knew that team fight would develop in the time it took them to gather that Grave Golem, so they just bailed out. They said, we got what we need. Let's see if we can get done up top, and let them pull around down here, just trying to be even with us. Yep, that's Absolutely amazing move. So fun. And you remember what we said before, the Grave Golem spawns in the place where it died, and they are summoning right now, as you can see, right. Red just gathering around that blue Grave Golem, they're not going to let that go anywhere. Yeah, they've really got to be on top of that. This is in a position they're not happy. There's a lot of shenanigans. They're just going to fight it to the death. Grave Golem popping up. It is a big looking Grave Golem at this point. Moving forward, Red powering through that. Be fast. Let's look at the top lane and see what's going on. There's Siege Giants up there as well, and Gazlo trying to hold off this Grave Golem as he's pushing in towards this uh, this very damaged town. Yeah, and it looks like this fort is going to fall, so at least the Grave Golem is going to do some damage there. And this actually ends up being okay for Red, because the Grave Golem for Blue uh, had already gone through a fort before, and is now trying to just uh, go against wow. these turrets, but can't actually get anything done. So this effectively ties things up. Look at the levels. Look at the levels. They're right back in it. This was where they were behind, and they're right back in this game because of those moves they did earlier in the mines. Red, it looks like, is making a serious effort towards the bottom position with Blue. is still trying to deal with this Grave Golem up top. And looks like just one more hit. Oh! oh Grave Golem bad. doesn't get it. That turret will stand for the time being, at least. Wow, Blue is pushing along here to the top. I think they're going to get this one with the Siege Giants in support. I don't think there's anything Red can do. Red is scattered. They're down towards the bottom. They are grouping up, and they are closing in. This looks like this could get ugly up here in this top position. Let's see if Blue sticks with it. If Blue gets their heels dug in here, this could be quite a battle. They're gathering in the bushes. They're and here comes here, come. here comes Uther, the man who doesn't die. ETC jumps right in, and immediately someone from Blue is just destroyed. Bala goes down right away as well. Uh, and the, the Naziba ultimate here has actually been doing a pretty decent job of being able to zone out Blue for the majority of this fight. But in the end, we've had a two for two. Naziba trying to get away. He finally ends up falling. Wow, huge, huge battle. Three heroes down on both teams. Uther actually in trouble a little bit there. He's a little low on health. ETC trying to get away. He oh. doesn't it. Uther. Oh, he's fine. He's fine. Oh, yeah, no. Uther walks away. Uh, <laughs> so, our, I, honestly, with that principle, he should just jump straight into the middle of them because Yo. they can't do anything to him. <laughs> oh, oh, oh! Can he do oh, it? Oh! No! Uther walks away Uther again. Walks oh! Away. oh, unbelievable. <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> Oh, I love it. I love it. <laughs> Uther just shakes his face. And all logic, I walk away. Unbelievable. So, <laughs> Can we make I, that his tagline? I, I walk, I walk away. away. We should, we'll put that in the audio next week. Just a minute, he survives. <laughs> I walk away. It is away. Blue grabbing a camp here. Good move by Blue. Still very even on the levels. Blue with an advantage there briefly in that top lane, but they held it. Yep, they absolutely held that position, and they didn't get what they needed out of that. Oh, right. yeah, Grave Golem is frighteningly close there, isn't it? Yes, it is. That's going to be a scary is. one. This next camp, and here we go, nine seconds, eight seconds left. Red already going below. Blue trying to move into position where they can go below. It looks like they're all going to go into the same entrance at this point. Yeah, and sometimes you'll see teams set up a little ambush there, but it doesn't look like they're going to do that. Uh, oh, Naziba gets caught out. Naziba doing a lot of damage, though, uh, in 
that actually may prevent Gazzo from being able to jump down into the mines, but Blue is actually going to take the opportunity. They're giving up the skulls underneath for now, and they're just trying to push for objectives. Wow, Blue thinks they can get it done. I, I like this strategy. This is fasting, and Red sensing the danger, sending some people home. They've got a couple guys coming back, including ETC, going to try to punish them for this move while they keep some guys below. Good division of the team. ETC using his mosh pit ability right there to cause everybody to dance. He gets a little bit of time. The town does go down. Uther saves ETC with his ultimate ability. Three heroes up top trying to fight off this massive push from Blue. Red scattering back a little bit, but they are sort of slowing down his position. Uther, you're fine. Don't worry about it, buddy. You can make it. Yeah, he gets tickled by Kerrigan a couple of times, but ultimately he'll be all right. A fort does fall, though, and that means there's only one fort remaining for Red. Blue has done a very nice job of aggressively pushing these objectives. Uh, they are down on skulls right now because um, only 27 to 0, but Red was forced to pull everyone back. No! Uther! Why? Why? <laughs> And Red pushing back at this point, scattering Blue away. There's like another kill. Whoa! Great move by Sonya. She jumps in. ETC manages. Oh, I don't know. Oh! oh. Down she goes. Red in great position here. Oh! oh! What a shot from Gaslow from the side. He may end up paying for this. No, Vala can't get close enough. Naziva can't stun her either. And uh, looks like uh, Gaslow's just going to walk away. Siege well. minion pushing down here in yep. bot. Yeah, that's, that's kind of a problem. they got really nothing to contest at this point. The Siege Giant's doing some damage down there. Down in the mines below, everybody's just completely abandoned them at this point to try to deal with that giant battle. Gazzo a little bit hurt here. Ooh, he's feeling a little frisky not to be going back to heal up at one of those healing wells. He's going to move towards the bottom lane. Red sending a hero down below to try to collect some of those skulls. And it looks like he's just going to rely on Malfurion down there to give him a little that bit of support. Too. That so. works too. Yeah, not too bad. Uh, they are going to take this mercenary camp, though, which is a very cool maneuver because Blue has so much pressure everywhere. If they can successfully take this and then get back, uh, heal themselves up, be ready to re-engage in a bit, Blue is still going to have a significant amount of pressure. I do want to say, though, I think that it's Malfurion that actually jumped down into the mines. Oh, no, I'm sorry, Naziba down to the mines down beneath, and he is starting to uh, push these back and start to gather some skulls That's for his team. That's a really good team. choice to send Naziba yeah. down. You know, he can do as much up top. He is one of our sort of classic siege style heroes we started to put into the specialist category right. and Azeeb has a lot of AoEs and a lot of ability to deal with uh, with those minions. All right well Red's pushing pretty aggressively down here and uh, as we see it's 49 skulls to zero in the mines so all Red has to do right now is hold on and if they take out Gaslow on top of this that would be fantastic but it looks like he's going to sneak away. Yeah, really well done. Oh, big fight developing here. Kerrigan getting the hook going in. Vala dancing away. ETC moving away. They do manage to grab those, those Siege Giants. Oh, oh. Sonya jumps right on top, but Vala still manages to sneak away. ETC jumps in there, doing some pretty good damage. Oh. Malfurion ends up dying. Wow, what a battle. Vala is really in trouble there. She can't take any more hits, but she's got to stay and try to help her team. Red scattering from what looks like a certain blue victory. Another hero goes oh. down. And then this evil ult pops in, but it immediately gets stunned. And almost everyone is down for red, just Vala remaining. She's got to heal back up, but her against four members of blue, I don't know if that's going to be enough. Oh, this is looking really bad. That is the palace. They're on it. There's not enough to protect it. I think they just need to right-click it, and they will absolutely get it. They're beating away oh. on it. Right-click, right-click the palace. You can do it. Kerrigan's in a lot of trouble. She's dancing away. Vala, look, Vala wants to kill her so bad. She wants to get the kill. Oh, but can't quite grab it. Oh, oh. comes right back in. Oh. Vala sneaks away with her uh, vault, though, and she stays alive. But this core is getting very low. Oh, Vala really driving them back all by herself at this point. Oh, Arthas is a little bit out of position. Arthas, look out, buddy. Oh. Down he goes. And Arthas gets off one more shot. That core is exposed, but it looks like uh, no one is sitting Everybody's down there dead. in the mines. Everybody is dead. Okay, let's <laughs> look down in bot lane real quick, if you don't mind. So it looks like we have some siege minions push pushing. This is actually pretty effective for Red. They've actually been gaining some pretty good experience while this has been going. They've been pushing downtowns pretty effectively. It's two forts to one at the moment. The Malfurion's coming in to stop that. Wow, and Red is all back up, and Blue is still down. Look at those death timers at the top of the screen. That is absolutely huge. Red is moving into position. Let's see what they're going to do with this with this advantage. They haven't dropped any of those last towns. They're going to go for the mines. They are. They're going to go for the mines. They're going to have probably the world's biggest grave golem if they can get this done. And that may very well turn around the game for them, but they've got to split their attention because inevitably as soon as uh, they get wind of this, Blue yeah. is going to start pushing. Yeah, and that top lane is so vulnerable. Right. right. It's completely exposed. You can see they've actually left a hero behind. They've left Naziba there to try to hold the line and push those minions back and protect that position. Well, down below, Red is absolutely cleaning house.
All right, it looks like Red is going to start going for that Grave Golem right now. Of course, they have complete control of all the skulls down here, so they have to split their attention between what's happening up top and what's happening down bottom. But Blue, honestly, is not pressuring anywhere. They're taking minion camps right now, and no offense, this minion camp is going to pale in comparison to that enormous Grave Golem You're in a second. totally right. I, I, obviously, you want to kick those camps, but the timing incredibly matters. They're wasting a bunch of time in those camps. Those camps are going to pay off for a little bit. Oh, oh. I, never, I hope the game doesn't crash. I have never seen a Grave Golem this big in my entire life. We're actually not red with the hundred skull grave golem. We're we're actually not joking. I've never I've seen never a one hundred skull grave does it, golem does it before. Work? Oh please! Oh boys! Please. We've tested this right. Everything's okay. Okay, here we are. This game is in alpha. I just want to remind it's everyone totally right alpha. now. Nobody panic. It's <laughs> all right. All right, Blue's pushing in. They've got that one last fort uh, remaining right now. They've got some pressure in top lane, but that's until this Grave Golem spawns, and it's coming up right now. I wonder what will happen to that tower when it spawns. Oh! oh. Its very presence destroyed the tower. <laughs> Look, just looked at it and it went down. Look at that health bar up at the top between the two Grave Golems right now. And uh, Blue is pushing pretty effectively. The fort goes down. They're going to try and make a move on the core while the Grave Golem for Red is pushing up top. Oh, unbelievable. This is so close right now. Their Golem is almost down. Big battle going in the middle. Gaslow in a lot of trouble. Down he goes. There's the ultimate going off on Sonya. She's spinning around in circles. Red tried to close it for the kill and get something done. Oh man, Red, oh, loses to Ziva! Nathiva cries out in shame there for a second. Uther does not walk away this time. He ends up falling, and uh, the rest of Blue trying to push through. ETC sneaks away. He's gonna regen his health here in just a second. Bala continuing to do damage, and what is that Grave Golem doing on top real quick? No, it's not gonna be enough! The palace oh! falls! Hey, Dustin. Um, I don't want to say anything, but Blue Team 2-0! Once again, evil has overcome good. <laughs> it's tragedy, tragedy here at BlizzCon, ladies and gentlemen. Tale of our time. All right, so that, uh, that is the matches we got today. I'd like for a moment, if we could, we've got a few minutes left here, so I'd like to have a little chat. Uh, maybe you could talk to, uh, to our Blue Team captain over here and ask him what his thoughts were on the game and maybe uh, how he felt like the games went. What were your thoughts on the game, and how do you feel the games went? Uh, <laughs> uh, so we, we got the first Grave Golem. Uh, we collected a lot of skulls down there, so we figured we could get out and start taking some objectives on the map. And the third Grave Golem, our plan was to just try and take out their core while they were all down there, but they, they reacted pretty well, and they came out and uh, dragged out a lot longer than we had hoped. <laughs> That was pretty impressive. You guys didn't quite have enough to be able to push in after the second Grave Golem and end, uh, end right there. What was going through your minds, though, as you kind of decided, like, well, we're going to give them the 100 Skull Grave Golem. Have you guys ever seen 100 Skull Grave Golem before? Did you know what sort of fury you were unleashing upon this battleground? Uh, 100 Skull Grave Golem is really scary. <laughs> we, uh, we didn't think we could actually kill it. We just had to kill them before it killed us. So... Totally understand. Well, congratulations to Blue Team once again for a 2-0. <laughs> all right, all right, Claudio, let's have a sad talk here. This is Claudio. He is the, uh, the producer on our team. He sits with us in our bullpen. He does an absolutely amazing job. Claudio, I had one thought that passed through my head when you guys got that 100 Skull Grave Golem was, oh, God, I go, oh God, I hope it doesn't crash. Is that what you were thinking as well? Yeah, we, we really wanted to get it. We thought it'd give us an advantage. Uh, we were just talking about it. It may have actually been our demise because we gave them a zero skull Grave Golem, which was enough to push with, but uh, we were biding our time at the end. They had one level on us. They had their level 20 storms, and we got ours just as they started coming. It was perfect timing, but we just couldn't hold them off. So I want to talk to Naziba here for me. This is Richard Koo. He's one of the senior designers in our game. Rich, you were doing a lot of work down there in the mines. Tell me what your thoughts were on the game. What were the strategies you guys were going for? And you know, sort of what do you think went wrong? Why, why did you lose? <laughs> so we had this idea that we were going to uh, play very defensive until we got, our, until we got to our her heroic ability. Um, because we have ETC Mosh Pit that stuns everybody. And Naziba can summon Ravenous Souls that deals, lo deals lots of damage. However, like before the first uh, mine event, we decided, why don't we take you know, the Siege Giant camp and let it push while, while we're actually down there. And we got really split apart. And then the blue team got the first big Grave Golem and really set us on the back foot. And we had an uphill battle since then. Yeah, it was absolutely an amazing game to watch. You guys had some really cool moves in there. I really like sort of um, your decision at one point to send to split your team, some top, some bottom. Do you have any thoughts about what was going through you guys' head while you were doing that? 
Uh, so we knew that the only way was to try to do that Hail Mary, get that 100 skull thing. So we split it up. Um, because like we have most of our tanky players like in, in a small group, they're able to survive even if they skirmish. They can disengage. Uh, Naziba, unfortunately, uh, if, he, if he's caught out of position, he's just basically dead. He can summon a bunch of zombies, but will likely trap himself too. So you know, I have to play a little bit um, more kind of split pushing by going into the mines myself and killing out the, clearing out the waves really, really fast. Right. Now I want to talk to my favorite player on this team. Was it you that were playing as Uther? Who was playing Uther? Come here, come here. I want to talk to Uther. This is, this is John Hodgson here playing as Uther. We were, we were watching you the whole time as you danced away consistently for what seemed like certain death. You were absolutely, our, I think, the crowd's favorite throughout the match. What was going on in your head when you were dancing there in that top lane as the enemy team was closing? You were completely alone at that point, weren't you? Well, I mean, I didn't have much to lose because uh, the rest of my team <laughs> let me down. So, But, um, yeah, so I, I honestly can't believe that works. <laughs> Yeah, um, and uh, Kerrigan came in and took a couple of tower shots, and uh, I was able to skid away with my life. And yeah, um, now I'm a hero instead of a instead of just a punk that was dancing in front of the towers. <laughs> <laughs> Which is absolutely that way could have gone. All right, everybody, we're about to close it out here. Thank you very much for coming to watch these shout cast matches of Heroes of the Storm. Woo! Live matches. Up next, Diablo Three Open Q and A.